Gloria with us. This is Gloria Brown Parsonson. Very good. Okay. I thought I Not ended, up, ended up butchering, butchering your name, but I didn't. I got hopefully good. But Gloria has, uh, has I'm reading a, a little bio here for her. Uh, she has a passion for local history, a seventh, a seventh grade generation resident, seventh generations of Knox County, tracing the family's arrival in the area of two family members, William Douglas in 1804 and James Loveridge in, in 1805, who established Dublin, Douglas Mills in Clinton. The family has been in the Rich Hill, Centerburg, Mount Liberty area for six generations. In the early 1980s, the Alpha Club, a woman's <laughs> club in Centerburg, encouraged Gloria to do a program on the history of Centerburg. And that was the beginning of gathering and documenting the early history of Hillier, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Liberty and Milford Townships. She continues to be an active in many community and county organizations, as well as being a local historian. 1999, she attended a three-week course of documenting and preserving oral history, Smithsonian Institute, Washington, D.C., and Kenyon College in Gambier, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Professionally, she holds a master's degree in social work. My daughter-in-law does, too. <laughs> social work. And, and as, as such, she has a strong background in documentation and differentiating between facts and opinions. Those skills have worked well with putting pieces of history into the larger picture. Her paternal grandfather, Edgar Brown, worked for the C.A. and C. Railroad in Centerburg. A maternal great-grandfather, Elmo Updike, and father, Richard Brown, worked for PPG in Mount Vernon and was a ser and served by this, which or that was served by the C.A. and C. Railroad. A maternal great-great-uncle, T.D. Updike, owned the Updike Mill in Centerburg, and that was also served by the C.A. and C. Railroad. Elmo Updike, also part owner of the Faultless Fence Anchor Factory in Centerburg, and shipped items by way of the C.A. and C. Railroad. The opening of the C.A. and C. Railroad through Knox County in 1873 brought many business opportunities to this area. And this railroad served, I mean, I, I don't want to take any more time, but Polly wrote up in this month the number of things that happened here in Sunbury served by this railroad, including big walnut students going up, the band going up to a Browns game one time. They, people used to get their mail, it was delivered here. But I'll turn it over and glory. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for having me come tonight. Uh, I like talking history, um, but I charge a fee for sharing my history with you all. Um, so we're trying to get a picture of the past and what it looked like. So it's like putting a puzzle together, piece here, piece there. And so I have some pieces and I'm gonna share my pieces with you tonight. If you all have pieces, and I know some of you do, uh, you need to share those too. So we all have a better picture of, of how that works. Now, a little bit of this you know, started because uh, we talked about all my relatives. I have one that came from England uh, in 1801 and he worked a farm in Centerburg or between Centerburg and Mount Liberty and when he got older 80 something he moved into town now that was when you retired from the farm you moved into town so he moved into Centerburg lived there for a number of years he lived to be 92 uh, and when he died uh, some of the female relatives went to his house took everything in the house took it out in the backyard and burned it now I'm in tears I'm horrified do you realize what this man probably had in his house? So the other pitch I give people is, you know, if you have stuff in your family and you want to keep it, that's great. You know, document it, hang on to it, share it with the family, share it with other folks. If you don't want it, do not take it in the backyard and burn it. <laughs> give it to somebody else who will appreciate it. You know, I work with the Centerburg Public Library. It's, it's now the Centerburg Public Library since 1982, I think. Uh, Centerburg Public Library and Local History Center. If you don't have a historical society in your immediate area, libraries can serve in that stead. That's an Ohio Revised Code, so I'm going, oh look, we can do this. Uh, so I work with the Centerburg Public Library and Local History Center to do a lot of what I do. So there's, there's a resource there to share it with, but find some place to put this stuff. Don't just let it go. So the, that's, my, what I, that's my little pitch for you know, taking care of history stuff. Um, 
On September the 1st of this year, 150 years since the first train came through in this area, it, it, it basically at that time was running from um, uh, Millersburg down to Columbus. It came in stages, but the well, greatest part of it was started in, in the September 1st one. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Uh, this is like, we're all sitting in the kitchen around the table talking. I do very well. You, you, yeah, if you've got a question, a comment, you know, just interrupt me. Just shout it out. It's just us here talking about history of the area. So we're very casual about this. So let's talk about context. So before there were railroads, we had. I can do this. There, I, I can run the pointer and talk at the same time. Uh, before the railroads, so there, there were dirt roads, and certainly. That was a real problem, depending on whether it was rain, snow, sleet, snow, more rain. Uh, if, you're, if you're running freight, uh, a heavy wagon, that's not a very big heavy wagon. Uh, but they would get mired down. It was hard to travel, very difficult. And so at some point, you know, the United States said, hey, maybe we need to look about running canals. So that was the next big thing in transportation. So they started looking at how do we connect canals and rivers, and we can use that for freight and, and move things around. So that started with the canals, uh, kind of slow, kind of laborsome, uh, not advantageous in the wintertime at all because they froze over. Uh, so in 2018, we had our first railroad, the VNO Railroad, uh, and that's a picture early on of their engines. Uh, so that began to be a competition for the folks that ran the canals. Um, now we need to do a little, you know, base of history here before we get onto the pictures of this railroad uh, in this particular area. So what did railroads bring to everybody? So, you know, there's, there's better places that you can get to. Uh, there's more point of access with the railroads. They're easier to put in than the canals were. You were more limited with canals. Um, Railroads were actually cheaper to build. Um, when you talked about the railroads were there, they were on time, they had a schedule, uh, they were a safer mode of transportation than what the canal boats were or just traveling on the road. Um, they, they actually had a schedule that they would keep to and you could depend on that. So some of those were all pluses for them uh, to be able to travel on a railroad. So lots of people that wanted the railroads. There were some, I've heard stories of the farmers in, in I think it was Milford Township, Milford and Liberty it, in Knox County. Um, they invested in the railroad, and lots of times these railroads, you know, they get started, they're gonna do this, and, and they didn't get very far, and they folded, bankruptcy, you know, and they lost the farm. But it was, it was worth that chance that we could get the railroad there, because then they can ship things out, grain, uh, you know, livestock, um, they can have things coming in, uh, so that's a, that's a real plus. Uh, the freight in and out. So we have goods and supplies, uh, more access to those supplies than what you would with uh, uh, using the canals. So in Knox County, um, what was the name of the little town? It was a little town, it was an Arcanum, but it's, it, it had a canal. And that was, most of the state's grain got shipped out of that area because that's where they could get it to. Uh, but there were more access to the railroads, so that was a, that was a better deal. So it increased your sales outlet. Uh, then you had traveling salesmen that would come to your town, and they're traveling around the back roads selling their wares. So it was a little akin to where we are with Amazon today. It comes to your house. You get online, you say, I want this, and it delivers it to your house. Well, that's kind of what happened with the traveling salesmen. They came to town, they stayed in a hotel in the town, they rented a wagon, uh, you know, horses and a wagon for maybe three or four days. They went out in the country and they went door to door selling their goods. So uh, we've actually been doing that for, for, a, for a while now. So now we need to talk about railroads and this one is actually the, the CANC. Um, that's what we all know it as and you see it in the newspapers a lot of times. It did not start out as a CANC. It started out um, as the Cleveland Pittsburgh, part of the Cleveland Pittsburgh Railroad Company. Uh, let me do this. So, um, Cleveland had a line that ran down to Pittsburgh. So somebody had the bright idea, gee, 
we could come out of Cleveland right here at Hudson. We can start heading southwest, and that'll take us clear down to Columbus. We need a, collect a connection from Cleveland down to Columbus. Because the nearest one, you'd have to come down here, go over, and then down. Um, so, okay, that was, that was the plan for that railroad. Um, so they actually incorporated in uh, March of 1851, and they started work on this railroad. So they actually got from Hudson down to Millersburg. Uh, so they, all of 61 miles. And the progress kind of stopped at that point. They were making some money. Uh, There's a few coal fields around Millersburg. <clears throat> so they were able to get coal and take that back up to Cleveland. Goods going back and forth. I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing that they didn't have a whole lot of money uh, to, to invest in further progress on that railroad. Um, in December of 1869, the name of the company changed from, to the Cleveland, Mount Vernon, and Delaware Railroad. So let's go back to the map. So the idea at that point was, okay, we're here in Millersburg's like right in there somewhere, uh, just above Kilbuck. So if we could somehow come across here to Delaware and then down to Columbus, Maybe that would be the better way to go. And I think there was actually a company that had started in Delaware and was headed towards Mount Vernon. So they had purchased land or leased land. They had done a rail bed, or at least the ballast for the rail bed. And so um, that was an idea that, okay, we're going to change how this is going. So let's go back to the other slide. Um, that never happened, though. Uh, but they, they then shifted back to Columbus from the Millersburg area. So the section was completed in 1873, and ultimately it all became part of the Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, in December of 1881, the railroad was sold because it was in foreclosure. Always oh, having money problems on these railroads. Uh, but that must be a, a, a risk that you want to take, because if you make money, it's, it's really good. But that's when it became the Akron, uh, the Cleveland Akron and Columbus Railroad. And so that's kind of the history of how we got to the C, A, and C. So we've looked at the map and talked about all those changes in the, in the companies that owned it at one time or another. Uh, let's talk about, we'll just do the whole picture of what's going on right here about the, the decline of railroads. So let's <coughs> fast forward to like the 1950s. And there was a lot of changes. After World War II, guys were back home. We'd made a lot of progress in technology, gas engines, um, how to put down ra roads, and so a lot of, a lot of changes and improvements. Um, at that point, families could afford their own vehicle. Uh, the roads were better. The highway systems were getting more connected, so there was more travel that went along with that. Uh, and we were beginning to see more and more semis on the roads, and so point of delivery was greatly improved over the railroads even. Uh, the CANC discontinued its passenger service in December of 1950. Uh, it was no longer lucrative to pick up passengers and move them, uh, but it still was for freight, so they continued with the freight operation. In July, July 4th of uh, 1969, uh, there was a really bad rainstorm and lots and lots of flooding that damaged not only the CANC but lots of other railroads. So that was a huge expense to the railroad. You needed to repair this. You know, bridges were out, uh, track was rolled up by the force of the water. Uh, so they opted to go ahead and repair their track, but not the whole through track. Um, it was only up to Holmesville, from Columbus to Holmesville, uh, that they repaired it. Uh, in November of 81, uh, it was then the Consolidated Rail Company. Um, I don't know whether you all remember Consolidate. If you all do follow railroads, you do. Um, they filed to abandon the rail line. Now, abandonment didn't just mean they were going to pick up and go away. They, they were planning on it. So it, it happened over a few years. So a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, they stopped running freight in, in 81. Well, to some places they maybe did. Uh, other places they may have ran. As long as the rail could bear the, the weight of the, the cars and stuff, they would keep running. And so it may take over a period of two, three years before they just quit running altogether and, and stopped repairing anything on that line. Um, so after the railroads, you know, just 
pretty much stopped operating in, in this area with the CANC, local folk began to think about, well, here's all this rail bed, it's there. Uh, at that time, there was quite a bit of talk about uh, Rails to Trails Conservancy and what they were talking about doing and that we, should, we needed to preserve the rail corridors uh, to use in a different manner. And so uh, we started with uh, the Kokosin Gap Trail in 1991. Now that's the section from Mount Vernon to Danville in Knox County. Um, in 01, the Mohegan Valley Trail was completed. That's from Danville on up to the, the county line. And in 2010, the first blacktop went down on the Heart of Ohio Trail, down around Mount Liberty. Uh, Homes in Delaware counties are doing the same thing in developing the rails to the trails. And that becomes a part of the Ohio to Erie Trail. And now we're working on having trail towns. Uh, a lot of these railroads brought so much industry. You know, it, it was worth building your industry in Mount Vernon, in Sunbury. Nestles, I don't think, would have been here if it wasn't for the railroad. And so that's what I want to talk about is, you know, what impact did the, the transportation have? And then the loss of that transportation made another change. And now I see more change coming with the rail system. That's a different kind of commerce that we're going to be dealing with, but it will help the economics of the communities along the way. So, any thoughts on that? That's a cool concept that, um, you know, that trail can bring new economic activities and uh, if you follow some, if you follow some of the trail stuff, um, there is a oh, what is it called? Mm, it runs from D.C. up to Pittsburgh, the Gap Trail, I believe, and it's it's been in existence for a while. And they did some some economic impact studies, and once the communities understood how to approach the people using the trail, their income increased some phenomenal amount. In, in like two or three years. Uh, so it, it's worth looking into. Uh, well, uh, Sunbury involved with that? Sunbury? London, Sunbury, Centerburg, Mount Vernon are all in a kind of a consortium working on uh, becoming rail towns. So we have a consultant, she tells us things we can do. Uh, we, we did a lot of meetings, mapped out, you know, here's what your community needs to be doing, you know, to recognize trail users and how to invite those folks into town. And so we're, we're working on learning how to do that. Oh wait, back to C, A, and C. So this, did somebody else have a comment? You don't want to hear me talk all the time. Um, so this is the C, A, and C that comes down through here. And so it, it was existing in Millersburg, and then we had to figure out how to get around the swamp at Kilbuck. A little bit of a job. Pretoria, um, Glenmont is, is the name today, and Bado Pass, and then you get over into Knox County. So we're gonna look at the, each of those communities along the way. So this is Kilbuck, and here it runs along. You remember we talked about the swamp, so there's a little bit of a river here. Uh, and that's the depot at Kilbuck. And then Glenmont, on the map it was Pretoria. So they have a site in there. Got to get water for those steam engines. And I don't know what industry or business the railroad brought to those communities. I, I don't know. Somebody does, I don't. So we'll eventually get more of those pieces to put together, uh, but right now I don't have those. The paved trail stops at Glenmont right now, up from Danville, and, and so. And, and they have, well, they're, they're working on a section, I think this summer they were supposed to work on a section into Kilbuck, and then beyond Kilbuck, they have funding for that, and that won't start work until next year. Uh, you need to get to Millersburg, right? Yeah, that's that's the plan. Right. So they're they're working on that. Uh, just like last year, Knox County finally finished up their whole section of the trail by finishing uh, oh like south of Centerburg on down to the county line. That little bit, the whole mile of less than a mile that goes through Licking County and then hooks up with Delaware County. So that got done last year. 
Uh, we talk about bad O pass, so that's that's like the steepest grade on the C A and C. Uh, it used to run up here, so it was even more of a grade, and so then they cut it out and dropped it down a little bit, so it wasn't quite so difficult to get over. Lots of stories about how engine extra engines out of Mount Vernon would either hook on when the train was coming out of Columbus to get them past Bad O Pass or if they were coming from, you know, a Hudson, uh, they would send a, a helper engine out there to get them up over the pass. So lots of work, if, if, if nothing else, there was lots of work going on for the guys that, you know, were then working the railroad. You gotta have the telegraph operator. You have to have somebody that keeps, and in this case, to get an engine, an extra engine to pull that up over the pass. Uh, I did this for Knox County Historical Society. And so one of the guys, he's, he's in his 80s, he called me and he said, well, I knew the guy that was the engineer. They hired him as the engineer for the helper engine and the, it sat in the yard and you had to figure out how to build a fire just enough to keep the engine warm, not fired up completely. And then he would come down and, and when they called for, they needed help, uh, then he would fire that engine really hard on the way up to Bad O Pass. And by the time he got to Bad O Pass, he'd have up enough steam to then pull whatever train he needed to. Uh, but that was his whole job for the railroad. It, it wasn't a daily routine of running an engine. It was being available whenever he was going to be needed. And they kept one fired and ready to go, which I thought was a really neat story. So I go home and I write this stuff down. So I have the stories that go with this presentation. You know how it got its name? The C-A-N-C? The, the B -A oh, bad, bad Old Pass. Bad, bad Old Pass. Bad, bad old pass. Yep. Oh, and that's according to Holmes County people. That's not just a... And I've, got, and I've seen it spelled, you know, sometimes, well, I'm sorry. Push the wrong button. Um, sometimes that's an A. Bad O pass. But it appears to be an A. It's still a bad O pass. <laughs> bicycle. Here you come going from Glenmont up to the, you know, the... It makes you work. <laughs> yeah, it's still a bad O pass. Well, you had the grade on both sides, too. Yeah. So it was tough coming and going. All right, now we're going to come down into Knox County, um, because I know a little bit more about Knox County. So we, I put on here all of the railroads. So the first railroad coming through was the B&O. Remember how it started back in 1828? Um, but this is the, the B&O line, and it got to Mount Vernon in 1851. So Mount Vernon was very happy with the railroad. Centerburg was a pretty thriving community up until that point, but when the railroad came to Mount Vernon in 51, then it's, oh, well, they can carry the mail, they can deliver the milk, and it took business away from Centerburg and focused it down here in Mount Vernon more. Not that that wasn't already a larger community in the, in the county seat, but it just took that focus away. Um, so the next one coming through was the CA and C Railroad in 73. Actually got to Mount Vernon in 71, uh, yeah, 71, 1871. And then the finished up running this part of it in 73. Um, this is the TNOC Railroad, Toledo and Ohio Central. Uh, they got coal out of Southern Ohio and took up the, the Toledo area for manufacturing purposes. And then the last railroad that showed up in Knox County was uh, the Wally Railroad. Uh, Walhounding, I don't remember, I don't remember the name of the railroad. We all just call it the Wally uh, that runs up through there. Uh, all right, let's see what, so we're in Brinkhaven and this is the CA and C station in Brinkhaven. Here on this picture, it would be just out of the picture over here is it, that's the CAMC line there. This is the Wally Railroad. It ran on a really long, tall trestle through there. If we want to talk Wally Railroad, I brought my Wally Railroad pictures. Um, somebody was over here at one of the antique stores one time, found a bunch of negatives. Well, I think this is the Wally Railroad. I don't know. Here, you take them. So I took them. I got them printed up. And sure enough, there's a lot of Wally Railroad pictures building the trestle. Uh, just really cool stuff. Uh, so we can talk Wally Railroad, but that's not what, I'm not here to talk Wally Railroad tonight, but if you like railroads, it's a little hard not to do all that stuff. Um, so 
this is an overview of just what the community of Brinkhaven looked like back then. It's not that big now. Switches. Looks like a yoke. Just different interesting things. Um, Danville was also Danville and Buckeye City. There were two communities, they eventually blended together and it's Danville now. But at the time it was, it was a separate Danville and Buckeye City. And this is one of the ones that kind of focuses on the idea that the local guys worked on the railroad. So here was a place that you could stay in Danville and you can get a job that pays pretty good. And so you don't have to go to Mount Vernon or you don't have to move to Columbus. You can stay at home in your nice little Danville community and, and have a decent paying job. This is their depot. Their depot is still there. Uh, it belongs to the mill now and they use it for storage mostly. Okay, now we go to Howard. Um, this is the early Howard station. Uh, there's the mill. This is this carries um, the road across the railroad, and it's still there. And in 1911, uh, whoever was supposed to be taking care of things in the evening left a switch open. Um, the train came down, the engine ran into the depot, caught it on fire. That was the end of that particular depot. So the next thing they did was they built a brick one, a stone one. So that's, that's why the change from wood to stone, uh, different you know, depots. And this is just an interesting picture. Um, you would come down the road and then you turn and come down this little roadway and across the tracks to get to the depot. Uh, yes, and she's either she's waiting on the train. Whether she's waiting to pick up somebody or she's about going to get on the train, I don't know. Neat light. But that's how Howard looks now. Yeah. No more railroad, but we've got this nice arch that we've kept. There's the old mill, and it's now the bike path, the Cocosin Gap Trail, which is part of the Ohio Erie Trail. Uh, Gambier. Now Gambier got a better station. Um, this is, you know, block. Whoa. Well, there'll be a moment's pause to figure out why we don't have pictures. <laughs> Roger's looking at it like, know. what did you do? I don't know. It just went away. But yeah, that, that was, there we go. Is that the one you wanted? Or? No, that's okay, I can, I can fix this. There, right back to Gambier where we were. Thank you, Roger. Good job. I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> See, you don't have to hire a tech guy, you can do it. Um, so because they had Kenyon College there, they, they, they thought they'd put in a little bit nicer station. And it, what you see in a lot of places is, you know, here's the mill that got built right next to the tracks. Uh, that was not there before there was the railroad going through there. Now this is a copy of a copy of a copy, but it's the best I had to get. Uh, but it is the picture when the CA and C got completed into Mount Vernon. So what does it say on there? It just says 1871 doesn't have a specific month or day. But the guys posed, you know, uh, that's the engine there, coal car here, other rail cars down through there. But I came across that, and so I thought, ah, I need to add that to the collection here. The new railroad, because they had, they had one since, you know, 1851 in the B&O, but this is the new railroad that came in 1871. So this is the second passenger station, the depot that's there now. Uh, that's that was fairly new. Uh, freight gets taken out of there, uh, coming by to pick up the folks. Uh, this is 
actually the freight station. It's still there. It exists now. Uh, used to be boxcar video. I don't know what's in there right now. Various businesses have located there. Uh, and the shop was built in 1883. So this is, uh, if you know where United Precast is now, Howard Street goes over here. And United Precast has all of their stuff. They took over the, the yard, the shop, for Mount Vernon. And this is where you keep that engine that had to run up to Bad Oak Pass. They'd be waiting to go. Um, but they, you know, they employed between 200 and 300 guys. Again, you know, here's a place that I can go work and make pretty decent money and stay in my own community. I don't have to go someplace else to get a job. Uh, so that was exciting stuff for folks. Uh, this is the tower that uh, serves the diamond for um, the B&O Railroad and the C.A.N.C. So you got to have, you know, something to make sure they don't run into each other. Uh, there's another picture of the C.A.N.C. station. That we all now here's here's the bike path now that we can pa go right past that. So Mount Vernon industry that got supported by the railroad now. Cooper, where they were, it's oil and gas compressors, they were more served by the, the B&O. But the Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company, which at one time was the world's largest plate, ba plate glass manufacturing company that, that, you know, worldwide. So that's, that's a pretty nice claim from Mount Vernon. Uh, but it operated from 1907 to 1976. And it was right next to the tracks. Um, I don't think the tracks show up in that picture, but they, they, they run right down in here. And so what happened to this? Hmm. So we've gone from rails to trails, and the factory is now a park, Aerial Foundation Park. They saved some of the buildings. Some of the steel in those buildings were from, oh, I can't tell you the date right now. I don't, I don't keep up dates in my head real well, but the Chicago World's Fair, they built a lot of things for the Chicago World's Fair well, rather than just trash that stuff. Well, so I think the guy's name was Cox, went there, bought the building, shipped the steel back here and helped make the buildings for Pittsburgh Plate Glass. Uh, interesting, you know, stuff, that, how things travel around and change. Oh, we get the Bangs now. Bangs is a little place, right? Uh, if you've all been up and down that 3C highway, you know Bangs is a small place. But because we have a, whoops, sorry, push the wrong button. Um, because we have the railroad now going through Bangs, well, maybe that's where we ought to put the county infirmary. Now, that's a huge building, uh, but that was the county infirmary. So if you are ill, if you are destitute, uh, if you were an orphan child, that's where you're going to go live. Uh, and they did. They had a nice farm. Uh, they did a lot of farming, canned their own food, you know, butchered, yada, yada. So they were pretty much self-sustaining. This is a little itty-bitty depot. But that was a change for banks. You know, I doubt that the county infirmary would have been there if it wasn't for the railroad. I don't know that for sure can't go back and talk. One of my relatives was one of the county commissioners. He could tell me if I could talk to him, huh? <laughs> Mount Liberty. Um, that's their depot. Um, I put this map in here because it shows you, you know, this little dry creek is what that is. Uh, there were mills that went in along dry creek. Now, dry creek is not very big and sometimes it does dry up, but because from Mount Liberty to Mount Vernon, there is a 270 some foot drop. So there's enough drop in Dry Creek that you can run mills. Um, the depot is down here. Um, there's a scales that are there. Uh, there was a warehouse in there. So the railroad runs right along there. Um, so that was a plus, you know, for Mount Liberty. Uh, I think it helped with the mills. Now we get to Centerburg. This is a very early picture. I think that's right after they finished building it. Those are the guys that built the depot. And I'm looking at the picture going, that's hardly recognizable to what it is now. 
Uh, there's just another picture of the depot and yeah, milk cans, cream cans, uh, luggage carts. I love these little signs that all of them have, you know, it, here's Centerburg and it's so many miles, you know, onto Condit, so many miles to Mount Vernon or Mount Liberty in that case. Uh, I like this picture because it shows the train coming into the station. Uh, this building back here, that's the mill. T.D. Updike, when he read the bio stuff, um, that was the mill that he owned. He didn't build it. Alsdorf built it in 1899. And then by 1906, Alsdorf sold it to Updike, and Updike ran it until the 1960s. Um, but right next to the railroad track. What a surprise. You, you get the theme here now, <laughs> where this is going? Um, this was the first mill in Centerburg. It was built in uh, 1875. So 1873 is the railroad went through, and look what, in 1875, we're building a mill right next to the railroad. This, this is, the railroad's like right down here. Uh, this is the tower. So this is where my grandfather worked. He was working at the switch tower. So this is the CA and C, and it goes on down that way. Kind of, kind of see how those hills are on the side? They had to dig it out to get the bed down through there. This is the TNOC crossing. So if somebody had to be there to make sure the trains didn't run into each other and through the switches so the trains can go with. There is a, there's a siding right here that you can change rails if you need to. So 15 to 20 local men worked in the tower. Nice job, don't have to go anywhere. Uh, or you can work in the mill. And uh, that was a flour mill. Uh, they actually, well, now you all know about this. Polly's gonna talk to you about uh, the Burr family and their milling. So one of the Burr kids came up here and started this mill. Uh, well, I don't think they started it. Hopkins first built it and started it. But not too long after that, Burr showed up, bought the mill, and uh, my grandma was friends with Parker Burr, and I remember going to Parker's house when I was a little kid. Uh, and here is that same view. So the tower would be kind of back here in this corner, and that's what it looks like down through there now. We have arrived at the Heart of Ohio Trail. <coughs> Okay, what happens to Centerburg when, the, when you know, uh, the train comes to town? So Centerburg now has uh, two hotels, one here and one there. They both think they have to have, you know, the, the porches uh, or the, o over the entryway. So it's pretty easy to pick them out there and there. Um, there were two livery stables. This is the one that was on Cherry Alley, which is on the south side of town. On the north side of town, there is this labor. Uh, this this was related to the Park Hotel, right there on the side of the building. It says Park Livery, related to the Park Hotel, which is right there. Um, and and there, you know, we're going to have a picture taken, so we're going to get the horses and the buggies out. So the traveling salesman would rent those and go out and travel around the countryside. Um, this is the great grandpa with the uh, fence anchor. Uh, so that was the Faultless Fence Anchor Company. Um, this is Hauk Sawmill. Pretty good sized logs, wouldn't you say? But that's, you know, probably still virgin forest stuff getting cut down. Um, so made things and, you know, shipped them out. Same thing happened to a lot of this logs. Instead of going here to the sawmill, they ended up coming to the Leatherman Hoop and Stave Factory. Um, and when you all order stuff from Amazon, how many people have an abundance of cardboard boxes at their house? You're overrun with cardboard boxes. Well, back in the day, we didn't ship in cardboard boxes. We shipped in barrels. So to have a hoop and stave factory, barrels, hoops, staves, down there on the side. So the hoop and stave made the barrels, and they sold barrels and barrels and barrels and barrels, and everything was shipped in barrels. Uh, food was shipped in barrels, pottery was shipped in barrels. So that was the shipping method of the day, not the cardboard box, but the, but the barrels. So it was, it was a good deal to have a hoop and stave factory. Uh, other things along the track in Centerburg, so we have um, lumber yard, coal yard. They started making cement bricks, cement block. That was a thing back then. Oh, we can make cement blocks and you can use those for the foundation of your house and you don't have to go out and dig up rocks to put under your house 
because that's all we got. So that was a good deal. Uh, apparently somebody in town had a steam roller and they used that to haul grain in. Those are, those are all grain wagons coming into the mill, Updike Mill. Uh, those are rail cars down there and they would line right up with the, the lumber yard. So maybe they were unloading stuff. Uh, Westerville bought an outstation, so it's the creamery. So it, it, nobody in the country got to drink whole milk. They had 2% milk that they drank because the cream all got skimmed off to get sent to the city, to Westerville, to make, I don't know, ice cream or whatever they were doing with the cream. Uh, it, it wasn't going to the kids in Centerburg. Uh, <laughs> that probably so. And now in Centerburg, we actually have a shop that you know promotes the Ohio to Erie Trail. They welcome the people on their bikes. They sell a lot of stuff that you know have to do with the trail. These are like coasters made out of sprockets and chains, out of bicycle stuff. So we're beginning to embrace the trail business. Okay, now we're going to come to Delaware County. Now you guys get a smallish part here. So we're going to come into Delaware here and do Condit, Big Walnut, Sunbury, Galena, and then on over into Franklin County. Comments, questions? I'm doing a lot of talking here. I need a break. Talk to me. <laughs> uh, Condit. Uh, so here's the water tower in Condit. Nice little station. Um, pumping house, I think, for the water tower. And barrels, look, they have barrels. They must be shipping stuff in their barrels. Um, they had to have that big water thing there because of the grade going from Sunbury up. The engines couldn't make it. They had to have You, you gotta stop and have water and steam engines. In, in, in another part of my life, my son and I own five different traction steam engines. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm a licensed engine, steam engine operator uh, for antique mm -hmm. engines. And so I, I know lots about I think that's how he and I got interested in railroad stuff because we had steam engines. So locomotives, steam locomotives are kind of run the same way as ag engines. So you probably know too then that they can't just take any water sometimes too. That they need like a special like filter or, or mm -hmm. somewhat purified water. They need steam it. injectors. Mm -hmm. There's there's special little things called steam injectors, and they can help. Uh, regulate the temperature and, and, and the force that that water is going into the boiler. And you don't want to put, if you're down on water, you do not want to put cold water in your boiler because it blows up then. Uh, now there's lots and lots of safety valves that go with that stuff. And if you're paying attention to your engine, that's not a problem. If you're not paying attention, it's a problem. Um, also in Condit, so we have what they call a warehouse. This is the warehouse in Condit. And at the day, warehouses were where you brought the grain in, you stored it there, and then when the, the train came through to gather up the grain, you loaded it into the car. That's what that little spout is all about. So there's a difference between elevators, which process the grain, and mills or warehouses that just store the grain. Uh, the other thing that we had in Condit, because the railroad track, uh, was um, Chadwick's tile mill. Looks like field tile, right? Nice little round clay field tile. So I, we have any more information on Chadwick's? Yeah, it's not by the railroad. It's not by the railroad. <clears throat> no, it's down um, on 605 between the two Condit. Between, I know. Well, between Condit Station and South Condit. But it was close enough that, you know, they probably would have used the railroad. Was it, were oh, they, I'm sure they did. Were they there prior to the railroad? Yes. What time did the, you, how are you with dates? I'll put a test here. <laughs> you remember when they started? Dennis Bell, who has the dry cleaner's thing, his wife was a Chadwick and part of that family. So the Chadwicks and the Murphys, and no, I can't tell you that off the top okay. of my head. But well, I, I, I know where it was. I couldn't um, either. Heston's Greenhouse is, was where that was. Okay. Yep. If you remember that. Well, Uncle, Uncle Ray was friends with the lumber company. He's there now. Yeah, <laughs> Uncle Ray was friends with one of the Chadwicks. So as a kid, I remember it was a Pete, Pete Chadwick. It's very close to the creamery, the Condit Creamery, because you can see the chimney. Right, that one. Condit Creamery. Creamery. Okay. See pieces of the puzzle. Um, 
So yeah, it's interesting that you know we have railroads and, and you learn all about the engines and how they ran and and that, but the impact it had on the surrounding area is is a noteworthy thing too. So we're at a big walnut station. So here it is going across the creek on the wooden trestle. Uh, I think the big walnut station was simply used for taking stone out of the quarry. Well, I I, I hunted that up. I think that's on your website. Probably. I stole that from the website and put it there. Like it yeah. talks about the stone quarry, and there's a picture of the stone quarry. So that's why they had that there. There was a siding, so they would stop and load up the stone to ship to wherever. But very near where the conservation club is today. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was handy to have the railroad to ship that stuff out. It, it increased their business, I'm sure, because uh, they could market to a wider area. Is that the trestle that they just no. poured it over? <laughs> That's the where trail? it was. It was. That trestle went down. Well, okay, let's see. Is it the next picture? There. Oh, yeah, there. Mm -hmm. That's the same location. Same Different location. trestle. Just but there have been three or four trestles there because they kept falling down. Because I tried to not make this terribly long. I, I have pictures of you know, when they were replacing the trestle with the, the metal sided one, and I didn't put all those in here. But that's, that's what it is now. Very nice bridge. You can. Wander across the big walnut there. So now we're in town. And so here's the Sunbury Station. The first one. The, the first one. There's the second one. There's nestles in the background. Right over near the tracks. And then we were talking, I, I don't know whether it was 57 or 56. I've heard it both ways. You know, this was the. It was 57. So, 57. It was a, the crowd gathering to go up to the Cleveland Browns game. Did the band go then too? That is the band. That's the band. The band, and that was who went, was the band. It was a... Uh, I can't imagine, there were a few parents. Look at the train there, and you see over at the left, you can see that house. Okay. That's the one I used to live in that my son lives in now on okay. this avenue. So do you know exactly where you are there? The um, Nestle's plant did not come because of the railroad. The railroad was there before Nestle's. Um, the creamery was there, and the creamery butter cow won the first prize for oh, okay. sculpture at the 1903 State Fair. Fair. That's a so cool they piece. changed the name of the butter to some very famous butter. <laughs> and so when the railroad was came in, one of their first customers was the Sunbury Creamery shipping the rail or the butter to New York and to California. They went cars on yep. it each time, which was really strange that they did. So Nestle's, I think, came because of the Sunbury Famous Fire. Okay. I thought that's that was, that's what brought. Kind because of Nestle's owned the plant for 14 years before they even set foot in the town. So it was... It helped out to have the creamery there in did. operation. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I've also heard stories about, um, not necessarily out of Sunbury, but other places, that it, it was really great if you wanted to go to a Browns game or you know some other um, sports activity, you could take the train. You didn't have to worry about driving. And the really nice thing, according to some guys, was you could have a keg on the train. <laughs> didn't matter who won. <laughs> it was just fun to go on the train. The Ohio State football team at the start of the 20th century went up to play Case Tech and Western Reserve up in Cleveland on the CNC. Back when the Buckeyes played the smaller schools. Yeah, and we were the only ones on the train. It was our. It was. It, it was a train for you guys. Us, yes. So the band and I would imagine a lot of the parents thought. Oh, those are the parents. Team. I'm. Yeah, I think half the town was. <laughs> Mommy, where are you in that picture? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I, oh, I wouldn't be in it because we owned the newspaper and no pictures of us could be in the paper. <laughs> so they made sure that we would not. You're not part of it. They would not. Well, I was part of it, but we would well, not be in the pictures. pictures. Yeah. Okay, where do we go now? Oh, we're going to go over to Galena. There's Galena's little depot. More cans of, we presume, cream going somewhere. And Galena Shale and Brick. Mm -hmm. Now, did that come because of the railroad or did it predate the railroad? Not sure. Okay, me neither. 
I'm assuming that it showed up and it at least, you know, was nicely the radar room track there by. is for the um, little train that went out to the quarry to bring the stuff in. Yeah. It, went, it went around the... It's a narrow gauge. Mm -hmm. It went around, yeah. Which is different for Flatland, Ohio. The regular gauge goes through the tube column. Yeah, it does. The train goes through there, but it was... Um, I mean, that one was built for the... For the um, Thing. It went underneath the road, under the three C. Had to go get the materials for making the clay. Mm -hmm. I have like a Galena brick <laughs> in my basement. Franklin Station. So that's about where Lewis Center Road is. And it is not a depot, it is a station. Right. And to the railroad, a station was a very small thing and for telegraph and if you really needed to catch the train as a passenger. It's very close to McNamara Park. And the, those people are related to people here in the audience. Okay. That's, that's a 3C highway in the back. Yeah, um, Alice Lacker is helping. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember whether it's he or she is related. I've read the, I've read the names, didn't remember them, I put them on the side. Uh, Sheldon says that it's our Uncle Ralph Clark yeah. and Doris Carpenter. Yes. That's it was the sister of his wife. Yes. Okay. I knew what they were when I put it on my website. It's a small world. Here we are. If you if you go on the, the line today or the, the rail trail, they've got a marker there. It says mile mile marker 128. And okay. that's real close so to where that, where that yeah. station was. Okay. Well, for the long time, I mean, Franklin Station, I'm like, well, what, what Franklin, I couldn't yeah, figure this out, couldn't, yeah. couldn't get it located, finally did, so, good to know about Franklin, 128. So now we're ready to go into Franklin County, and so we're up here, whoops, sorry, wrong button. I know that's maddening. Come down through there. So that's what we're going to take, a quick tour of that. Questions, comments, things to share. Oh, I should have talked to you about way back when we talked about the uh, the Mount Vernon uh, yard. That's Nick back there was nice enough to let me wear his his banner. So was this the? I can't read it upside down. The it was one of the reunions of the guys that worked in the yard, mm -hmm. and so that was a special thing. So Nick was able to get a hold of one of these. Was it the thirtieth, twentieth? Um, that one I don't believe commemorated any anniversary but it okay. just says it's the shop uh workers relief association mm -hmm. for the uh the shops in mount vernon ohio which um i believe just worked on uh rolling stock and not locomotives i don't believe that, that they did that yeah there but um it's just such a cool piece of like labor history but it, and I, I, I like it it's, it's very cultural in the back it's side double-sided too, too. Mm -hmm. how looks so I got to wear that tonight, so I'm like, yep, I'm wearing that. I'm good with that. Uh, Westerville. Um, there's the, the depot. There's the mill. Here's somebody bringing in logs. I would assume to ship out. That was Bennett Manufacturing. They did stump pullers. They were famous worldwide for pulling stumps back, okay. back in the day. Well, I know about stump pullers, but... Why, why the the logs on the wagon then? Stumps, I guess. <laughs> I guess they, they did logging too. I, yeah, I don't know. I wonder if it's uh, one of those lumber companies. Two could have been. Well then, so here's the the yard for Westerville. So tell me more about is it Hans? Hans. Hans. <clears throat> um, they made metal stuff farming. Uh, fanning mills mostly is what I understand they made. Now, you all know about fanning mills? Do I need to separates the grain, cleans it out? You can have different screens for different sized grains. That's not the Westerville elevator. That's that's Sunbury. That's Sunbury. That's, that's Sunbury. Okay. Well, then I've got that in the wrong spot. See, I've learned something. Very good. I'll fix that. They had them everywhere, so. <laughs> so that is 
That's the that's burr. burr. Yep. That's, that's what it burr. says. To give you some perspective there on East Broadway, that's that's the street on which I grew up. Okay. So I used to, I did all my train watching there. And right there on the left was Kilgore, which was famous for toy guns and caps. Um, in this picture? Yeah, right there is where the Kilgore okay. became big all through the 50s and into the early 60s. Well, and that's the electric department on the right. Right there at the very, yeah, right in there. Right, no, in there. right there, a little close there. Yeah. yeah. That one? And then there's the grain elevator up toward right there. Right there. And then the depot. And then you get to the creamery and, and uh, summer lumber. Well, I was wondering where Kilgore was. That's See, Kilgore right there. During, during World War II, uh, an aunt and, and grandma uh, worked at Kilgore. <coughs> and of course, as a kid, I, I had all the cap guns right. from Kilgore. All right, I'll fix that picture then. Good to know. Uh, coming into Columbus, you have the Seven Mile Yard. So those two furthest lines were the CA and C lines. So that train is actually on a CA and C line. And then you're down to the Columbus Yard, which is this huge complex with lots and lots of rails coming in. Roundhouse, where you did fix the engines. And then the first two Union stations. This is a wooden one, and it's the first one that they had. And I don't know exactly where it was located. And then the second one, that one I think burned down, and then they built a brick one, neither one of which is the Union Station that we might have been familiar with. Now if you will look at the Clovis Yard, that's where they have the salt today, right there where the uh, roundhouse is. If right you go on two, on two, or yeah, Six, seven, six, seven. Six, seven. six seven. You go through there and you see the salt tower. It's right on top of the, of, of the roundhouse. And then the C A and C are the two lines farthest to the left. He's over here. No, over on the very left hand side. Closest to you. Yeah. Over here. Keep going, yeah, right there. That's the C A and C coming through. Okay. Over toward Pedor Crossing, which was the end of W. And then the N and W yard is right there at the very top. Right down right in here. there. That's mm -hmm. and they had that the Pensy had a yard where they exchanged coal cars. And that was the big traffic right in through there. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to get in the way. Oh, that's, that's why we're here. That's why yeah, I said tell me right. things you know. That's that's an area that I haven't been super interested in. I you know, I may be talking more about the steam engines and you know, how they operate and because they have different pistons and whether they're side or, you know, parallel mounted or what. And, and so at the bottom left, you need to fill you in. You can barely see it. That's the coal tower. Oh, yeah. At the right, right in the very, very, right there. Right there. That's the coal tower. Okay, it does look like a coal tower. Right there. Yeah. You can see the little top to it. Right. And that's Sinclair Avenue that's going across the. Uh, this? Or not Sinclair, what am I thinking? Leonard. Just across no, there? Leonard's coming up. No, right. You can see the bridge right right, right that across. That's Leonard Is that a water tower? That then that's they have a water tower there today, a much bigger one. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that from Fifth Avenue if you're cutting through. Okay. Sorry. Anybody got any other info to share? Well, since Web C. Ball was born in Knox County, Fredericktown to be exact, I couldn't kind of go through this without mentioning Web C. Ball. Um, he was a uh, jewelry maker, and he particularly was interested in making watches. So he made watches, and he made very accurate watches. He eventually moved his business to Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, but eventually, uh, after a couple of horrendous wrecks by the trains, because there wasn't standard time. Uh, the railroad just said, we need standard time and we need somebody with really good watches and everybody's gonna run on the same time. And so Webb Ball got to be the watchmaker for the railroads and was officially, whoops, I did it again. Uh, wrong button. Uh, so that's a Ball railroad watch, pocket watch. I didn't, I, I have one, I didn't bring it tonight. I think it was about a 1906 one. 
And anyway, this brings us to the end of, you know, what used to be, this is the Updike Mill, or the Alsdorf Mill, and there it is now, and right along the Heart of Ohio Trail, the Ohio to Erie Trail. And that's the, the board from, oh, probably 12 years ago. So, working on becoming rail towns now. So, that's the end. More questions, more comments. We're going to have Nick come up here and show you some of his stuff. Anybody else bring good things to show? Well, I would mention here that that within the last several years, in, in 2021, I bragged on myself here a little bit. I had an article in Conrail Quarterly on the CNC. Another guy who we've met, and you may know Nick, or uh, he's from Mount Vernon originally, Brad Upham. Yep. Okay. He's got. He had an article in Keystone on the CNC. So, and then another gentleman had an article on the CNC in the PC uh, Post. So there have been three articles, you know, on this little line. So obviously it's garnered quite a bit of interest. And I, uh, I, I don't have a, any extra copies of my article. And I wish I had. They, they well, sold out. I guess that's good too. So. Are they online anywhere? I Mine isn't because they just didn't. I can't, I can't transfer that online somehow. Okay. I'm not enough of a tech person, but I, you know, I do have an article. And it's, uh, well, thank you for doing all that research and writing it down. Well, so like I said, I, I did, you know, came up to Westerville and did all the digging from that part. So, well, in some respects, it's kind of exciting that, that the CA and C, the the line, uh, is being preserved in in the rails trails. Uh, otherwise, it just kind of gets dozed over and turned back into farmland and. We just kind of remember where it used to be. So well, I don't know how many people have heard on the news they're going to have the what was the the C A and C all the way downtown Columbus. That's going to be like a green area, Corbin. and that's coming through like Linden and on up toward uh, Morse Road, and then on over to Cooper, toward Westerville. That's all going to be a green area that's going to be developed. Not necessarily just the rail trail, but they're going to have parks and they're going to widen the. So that's that's just been the last six months or so. That's been. Yeah, it's been on the. Yeah, it's on Channel Four. Okay, cool. So, so yeah. it'll be a nice green corridor, green space. Green corridor, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay, Nick, you want to come up here? Sure. And talk about your goods. Sure. Uh, yeah. Mention a. FOIA company. Was that in Summer? They made Captain? Kilgore. Kilgore. It was in Kilgore? Yeah. 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 Kilgore was a company in Westerville. Oh, it was in Westerville. Right. Uh huh. And then Kilgore was the name of the company. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, they work with munitions during. Munitions. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was afraid they would be. Well, incendiary bombs and flares, too, during World War II. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the, they had some other land further east that uh, they had. I don't know at what point they moved away from the tracks, but when I was a kid, I remember seeing the um, off of County Line, not County Line Road, Max Town and Tussock Road, the, the remains of another part of their uh, operation. And I was always told like that that was real contaminated ground, not to ever go in there. And I guess they remediated a lot of that. And, and, uh, but there's there's still part of it that's undeveloped secretly, and they're trying to. I hope people don't remember that whole part. That's right up to a, a residential neighborhood. So. Isn't that right where Audubon's at Questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I, my understanding is that folks tried to get Audubon to you know make some recognition of Kilgore there, and they didn't. Hmm. Hmm. there too. They yep. didn't want it forgotten for some reason. Okay, Nick, you can come up here. Sure. Even if somebody else wants to talk, you can be up here while they're talking. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, feel free to just jump on in. Um, yeah, Polly mentioned that that ribbon. That was a cool find. Um, 
I don't have a lot. Um, but if you look and you go around to railroad artifact shows and eBay, you can always find um, cool postcards and stuff that are out there. And um, I'll pass some of these along. I have a couple photographs of some they're really nice old photographs of CANC steam locomotives. Um, and some old ephemera, so I'll just begin to pass those along. 